C2 frameworks or command and control frameworks are a dime a dozen. There are so many new, different command and control frameworks that just tend to pop up every now and again because people tend to think, hey, it's pretty cool, it's pretty elite when you create and craft your own command and control framework. With that said, there's no shade in this. I think it's pretty awesome. I think it's very cool when folks get together and build their own tooling. So in this video, we're going to play with the Havoc C2 framework. This one came out just recently and I don't believe it has any new detections or anything that might be able to, oh, raise some alarms, but we're going to kick the tires and get a chance to play with it. But before we dive in, I do want to give some love to today's sponsor. PlexTrack is the premier cybersecurity reporting and collaboration platform that makes penetration testers, red teamers, and cybersecurity teams more efficient, effective, and proactive. With PlexTrack, you can eliminate the dull and boring drudgery of report writing, so you can focus on what's really important. Hacking, the engagement, the assessment, and the campaign. And it's not just for offense. PlexTrack is a collaboration portal between both red and blue teams to facilitate effective purple teaming and faster remediation. While coordinating between multiple team members, you easily aggregate findings, pull in reusable content from write-up databases and content libraries, and track and measure progress in real time. You can import assets from common CSV files, Nmap, Nessus, and many of your other favorite tools. PlexTrack boasts 25 plus integrations, and that list is always growing. You can do even more with PlexTrack's runbooks, with scripts mapped to the Myra Attack framework or plans from Atomic Red Team and Scythe, or assessments built off of the CIS controls and benchmarks. And of course, show the impact with PlexTrack's analytics and visualizations. Customize your reports with your team's logo and details, and with a single click, export your report and send it off to the client. Spend more time hacking and less time reporting. Learn how you can boost your team's efficiency by 30% and cut reporting time by up to 65% with PlexTrack. Seriously, check them out. I have great colleagues and peers that use PlexTrack every day for reporting. Sign up for a demo and claim your free month of PlexTrack right now at https jh.io slash PlexTrack. Huge thanks to PlexTrack for sponsoring this video. This is going to be a very exploratory and discovery-based video because I don't quite know what I'm doing and I'm kind of going in cold here. But hopefully we have some fun, fingers crossed. Okay, now we can get into the fun stuff. I am over here on my Kali Linux virtual machine, and I did want to showcase and give credit where credit is due. The Havoc framework was brought out just recently on September 30th by Spider, or 5 Piter. Don't exactly know how you want to end up saying that. This is his Twitter, C5 Piter, or C Spider. C2 and malware dev, not a professional. Hey, doing everything for fun. Doing it for all the right reasons. So this is the Havoc Framework GitHub repository. I'll zoom in on this super quick so we can kind of get a look at what we are up against. And it says this, Havoc is a modern and malleable post-exploitation command and control framework created by Spider. Okay. Looks like it has some pretty slick screenshots here. Zooming in on these, I dig the little visualization where you can see, oh, the firewall and your targets, the victims that you already do have compromised. Looks very Cobalt Strike-like, but we'll get into it and we'll see what fun we can have. They do add a disclaimer here, hey, Havoc is in a very early state of release. Breaking changes might be made to the API or the core structure as the framework matures. But you can dive into the wiki for complete documentation. I'll open that up in a separate tab, and we'll check out the installation guide on the wiki for how we can really get this thing started. Looks like it is a cross-platform user interface that is written in C++ and Qt. Got a nice modern dark theme based on Dracula, and the team server is in Golang. I'm a huge fan. I really dig the Golang language. Multiplayer hey support for other operators payload generation whether it's executable shellcode or dll and http https listeners customized c2 framework external c2 etc 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 the demon i don't know if that's supposed to be the daemon or really agent itself that is the ha havoc's flagship agent written in c and assembly looks like it has some nice sleep obfuscation excuse me sleep obfuscation etc tons of other super cool things so let's just kind of kick the tires and play with this but before i do i would be remiss to mention hey if you do like this project please go ahead and support spider on patreon let's dive in i want to get over to this wiki here it says welcome we're in the process of building out the github wiki for now please just reference the wiki flat file present in this markdown file all right looks like we still do have a table of contents which is nice to bebop around looks like installation can be through either a local install docker container or jenkins and then building each of these things let's just scroll down and start from the top here I dig the very first name, version 0.1 is a star platinum. This is the first public release of Havoc. And Kali Linux looks like it does have some font or formatting issues. Odd. 
You will experience formatting issues in the Havoc client if you're not using a mono space or fix width font. Uh, okay, whatever. Looks like these might be some errors or issues that people run into, but let's dive into installation. We do need to grab a couple dependencies or prerequisites that are needed here. We can grab all this and do the copy button nice and easy. And I'll open up a terminal where I will make a directory, I suppose here, for Havoc. All right, let's just slap this in. Totally cool with it. Here's my password. Should just be Kali in my flat Linux Kali virtual machine and we'll download all of that noise. What else do we got here? We do need to be using Python 3.10 in your app repositories before you can run the client successfully. Okay, I do need to validate. Uh, let me open up another terminal here. Uh, am I using Python 3.10? I do have it installed. I don't know if I have it set as my default. If I just run Python 3. Okay, still brings me to Python 3.10. Dig it. Now, that should already be set. Uh, we can just validate that build essential is installed. I don't think we need to build any of the new development libraries, but we might actually need to grab this one. So let's, for some sanity check, let's go ahead and install that, please. Is this one done? Ooh, it looks like it had some issues. Let me uh, try to run with tag tag fix missing as it suggests. Does that run there? All right, fingers crossed. Couple of IPs that it's not able to pull down, but we'll see if it comes to it. Okay, some of that still had some issues, um, but I think we can just roll with it, right? Let's go down to get Python 3.10 dev, fingers crossed. I don't know if that's already installed. Uh, maybe, yeah, let's try that fix broken install. Does that just need to remove that? I think that should be how it should be. Yeah, and let's just try. See if it can pull those down. I don't know if it will or not be able to. Whatever. Apps might just be wacko broken for me. Let's keep cruising. Uh, we do need the bookworm repo for Python 3.10. All right, let's try to roll with those. If anything gets super muffed up, hey, this is a virtual machine. I can just kind of make it pretty throwaway, roll out a new Kali box, and no, I'm cool with breaking stuff. Yeah, whatever. All right, if you are using a Debian-based distro to try and build the client, you can use the bundled installation script at Havoc Client Install. So we do need to clone the repository. That is using um, HTTPS, which I don't quite like. Let's just go ahead and download that with the git at github.com colon Havoc Framework Havoc.git. So that should be able to pull it down with whatever git SSH way that it does. Uh, and that should give us the repository here. Let me check it out. Yep, cool. Now that I'm here, we've got everything that we might need, but we want to build and run. That should be with the Havoc client install one. Um, presumably that should do everything that we need. Running Havoc will automatically build the client and start it. Um, what if I just do this? It's in the current directory, right? Client is just right here. So yeah, I can just use the dot slash client. Presumably that is already uh, chmod plus x and we'll just blindly run it. Oh, no, I guess it's not, all right. Nope, not already executable. So let's see hmod plus x do everything that the internet people tell us not to do. Just blindly run, you know, the script that we're supposed to. Uh, build sh is not found. Oh, because we haven't actually ran cmake. So we seemingly need to do that. Maybe I'm stupid and misinterpreting the order of operations here. But uh, yeah, you want to cd build, which I am, whoa, whoa, wait, what? Oh, make directory build and then create it. See, make up oh, parent directory, slap all that together. Now it is done. And now we should be able to run dot slash havoc dot sh. What? I don't have dot sh. Let me just, let me just run that install that sh is kind of what we're we're allegedly using let's try that that looks better looks like it's now going through and making things okay we'll let that do its thing all right libs are installed and the client has been built i dig it now i should theoretically be able to run havoc and there is a client excellent all right so now we need to go ahead and build out the team server correct that is in this team server directory. And the wiki says you should go ahead and download some go 
dependencies. However, they do have another install script that should put this all together for you. So let's try that again and just see, I don't know, did I do something wrong here? How I did this previously? Uh, oh, that might just be for dependencies. I feel like that's not build. Whatever. Let's just use these go commands. Go mod, pull that stuff down. Okay, theoretically done. Move into the team server and just simply run make. There we go. Okay, that finished. And now we just run the team server out of bin. Is that in the current directory? What? Where's my bin? I just have it in team server. I just have it in the current directory. Team server attack H. There we go. Okay, we got the team server, but no bin directory. So goodbye me. Um, let's just play with it now. All right, what do we got here? How do we run this team server? Having team servers written in Golang. It handles the listeners, team server authentication, and payload generation. It also supports external C2 functionality through the configuration of service endpoints. A script is included to automatically start the team server using some of the default options, Havoc team server, team server. Is that not what I just ran? Hello? Is that not the binary? No, that is the binary. Whatever. Running team server will automatically build the team server, set it as a queue, and start it with the following options. I don't have a bin, so I'm just going to run it. Yeah. Okay, it looks like it's there. Havoc. Pwn elevate until it is done. Super slick. So you could use this with a profile, but I don't have any profiles just yet. Havoc's team servers uses profiles in the Yao whoa, Y-A-O-T-L format, which is a custom configuration syntax built on top of HCL. What is HCL? What the heck? HashiCorp? HashiCorp config language? Interesting. Both human and machine friendly. Using it, some Golog examples. What are some of these... Oh, oh, okay. So this is what the syntax looked like. Attributes and blocks. This looks kind of Terraform-like, at least like, you know, styling within that. And there's the JSON equivalent. Interesting. Whatever. So we need a profile. The default profile can be found in the profiles directory. Do I have that? I do. I can see profiles right up there. And we have a Havoc that thing. That's not my default, but I'm assuming that's supposed to be. Ooh, can I give this some syntax highlighting? Like if I set this to JSON, it gets super whack. If I set this to Terraform, what should I, what's a fine color? I guess bash works, that's all right. All right, so the team server will host on all interfaces on port 40,056 with compilers for building things. Then we have operators being the user accounts we could presumably log in on. So listeners at given locations and then services and then daemon endpoints into what we might inject into. Interesting. Team server can be configured to listen on a specific port given the configuration of the profile and the operators are defined. Oh, just as everything that I was reading through. Okay. Sleep and jitter look pretty normal as you might be used to with command and control frameworks. Currently, only HTTP or HTTPS listeners are supported by Havoc. Nothing wrong with that. This thing is still in its early stages. We can still play with stuff. Client is started as we did earlier. When the client opens, you'll be presented with the profile window, similar to that in other C2 frameworks, just like Cobalt Strike. Enter the profile name, team server bind address. Good, good, good. Let's just start to play with it. So we know that I have a profile now. If I use team server, tac tac profile equals profiles havoc.yautl, fail to execute team server clients. Uh, did I pass that the wrong argument? Tac tac profile. Does that need to be a space? What? Oh, need to be team server server. Gotcha. How about that? Ooh. 
Okay, so now it's using the profile that we selected, explains what we'll be using for compilers here, starting up a little web socket on 40056 and going to different service handlers present. Starting up a listener already for me, I dig that. However, this IP address looks to be wrong because it's not my current IP address. Um, let's change that in the profile. Let me get my current IP address. I am in my little virtual machine environment, so it should be 111138 currently. And let's open up my profiles and modify that. Uh, that was down here as my agent. And I'm assuming that port, I don't know if it'll have the permissions to run on that port. No, seemingly cooking. Okay, so that is spinning up the server the team server down here, but I know that I need to move into the client. So let's go in there and let's try and just run dot slash havoc. Okay, havoc connection dialog, we need to connect to a havoc team server. So I know there's my host, my IP address, we'll call that just Cali. Um, port can be 40056, as we've just seen. User, I think Neo, and they were using password one, oh God, I can type password one, two, three, four, connect. Ooh, here I am in Havoc. So what do I do? New client, listeners, can I view my listeners? There's my HTTPS one. Can I zoom in on this? No. Uh, I can't change the preference. So I guess we're gonna be stuck with that little thing. Okay, oh, I can edit these. Ooh, this is letting me just modify what sort of uh, structure and setup is for my listener. Looks like it has a default user agent as some headers. Yo, I don't want those. That's gonna look like, I don't know, some fingerprints for me, right? Remove those, enable proxy connections, host headers, etc. cetera. Uh, whatever, he's good. He's good the way he is. And now session view can be table or graph. Graph is where we have our nice little visualization. And it looks like I can drag this down. So I have a team server chat where I can be like, what up other operators? Hello, fellow hackers. Oh, I can zoom in on these. Whoa. All right, sweet. Super cool. Oh, uh, so I can, uh, you know, Tell them everything. Now, um, loot, that looks presumably either screenshots or downloads or things based off of different agents. Event viewer, presumably what we did. Did I click on that properly? Oh no, I can close all those tabs, so that's kind of nice. Event viewer is way over here, so that's already visible. All right, so let's build a payload. Here we go, let's create a daemon, uh, selecting the default listener that I have set up, getting the architecture, and we'll build out a Windows executable. We can also try and build out a Windows DLL or shell code, and then what we want to do to sleep and use syscalls or the techniques that we might use. We'll spawn into Notepad, interesting. Can I change that? Oh, I can. Oh, super cool. So that, spawns something injecting into a payload presumably I don't know let's just try it whoa 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 oh spawn 64 and spawn 32 I had to scroll down to see that one we're gonna make it a little bit bigger so that's visible let's try it into calc if I generate this starting that build using the indirect sys calls compiling the core DLL I did just make shell code though I should probably should have made an executable. We'll see where this spits it out though. If it does. Oh, hey, there we go. All right, let's put it in havoc. There's our daemon.bin, there's payload saved. Let's make the executable, generate that. And I'll put that in havoc just as well. There we go, good save. Cool. Um, and scripts. We might be able to play with. I'll have to go look at the wiki as to what the heck we can do with it. Oh, it's Python though. So you can kind of do whatever you want, I'm assuming. About tells us what we're doing here. 
documentation. I'm sure that will spit us up into, yeah, the wiki as it did. Uh, API reference, that's kind of handy. And then it'll take you to get a repository. Okay, so we have some payloads built. Let me go explore and see what else I should have been doing, at least according to the wiki. Reading about the agents. Demon is the primary Havoc agent written in C or assembly. Source code is included. Uh, currently only x64, exe, and DLLs are set up. You can, or support anyway. You can use the Havoc UI to navigate as I just did. Looks like it uses any sort of layout that you might specifically like. Already have some commands built in. We have check-in, request to check-in from the daemon to get metadata, host information, process info, and operating system info. Sleep, running jobs, manage processes to list things, and then be able to actually retrieve tokens. Also injecting shell code, different techniques, .NET to list the available and installed .NET versions, and then even an inline execute to path to assembly. I dig it. Other modules you might be able to include, even Power Picker, Invoke Assembly, and the Python API. That is something we can play with. Ooh, they have some examples here, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's so slick, how you can extend it and basically do whatever you want with it. Using Havoc's service API, custom third-party agents can be written to interact with the team server using the intermediate Python API. Here's an example of a third-party agent called Talon. Talon connects to the team server over the endpoint to find the service, and then you can kind of mess around. That's super slick. Anyway, let's try and get a callback. Let's go ahead and spin up a little Windows victim here. Let me clone my Windows 11 with Office Space. Okay, logged in. Let me uh, rechange the font size here so it's a little bit easier to see. Bring that to like 150. Oh, okay, cool. So now let's go back to our Kali box uh, where we have defined and created our payloads. Let me just fire this up with updog just so I can, you know, go play with it, pull this thing down. Um, and let's try it. Bring me to my payload guy here and let's drag this over and let's bring Kali over here just as well. So I have now Havoc running and listening, hopefully being able to see some agents. Um, Defender should be kicking around doing its thing. Yeah, let me open up virus and threat protection so you can see Defender is still on. You go into made setting, I'll turn, I'll keep real-time protection on but none of the other stuff to, to snoop and wrap me out over here and let's grab the demon executable i'm totally cool with it yep let's keep this anyway and let's go open this fellow up let me view with extra large icons here is our demon let's run him and boom already seeing the callback looks like he's getting initialized here there is our friend i didn't see any activity defender is still sweet pretty cool with it i mean i guess it's just kind of the callback like Hey, super quick, John from the future here. Sorry, just wanted to showcase that this is in fact a fully updated machine. I was going through this in the editing and I thought, you know, that would probably be worthwhile to showcase. If I go ahead and check for updates, let me go ahead and click that Hey, check for updates button. Looks like it is fully up to date, absolutely patched. The latest Windows 11 machine that we got rolling here. I'll fire up my virus and threat protection one more time so you can see the Defender is in fact running. We still have real-time protection on. Uh, so let me go ahead and see if I can just get another callback super quick. I have Havoc listening over on the other side. So let's go to our downloads and let's run our daemon executable. And still, Defender, totally cool with it. Absolutely fully up to date, and you can see that we do have our callback. So, man, hey, kudos, props to you. That is uh, pretty, pretty slick to get that callback working just fine. Uh, no issues on that Windows 11 fully patch update side. Sweet. Back to the video. Can I right-click this fella and interact with him? I can also explore with a process list. Nice. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, and you can see, like, the parent, like, all the chains underneath it. Microsoft Teams doing its thing. <laughs> what else do we got? Let me, uh, you can do open the file explorer and that lets you just navigate around. Moving to the C, whoa. It doesn't quite know where I am yet. We can mark as dead, but let's interact with him. Huh, sending tasks to the agent. Not being able to retrieve things though. Can I run help? Whoa, yep. Help, sleep, check-in. So let's get, let's force the check-in and see 
There we go. It gives me everything that I might be curious about. The operating system, the process that I'm running in, the internal IP address that we've got, host info, metadata about my agent. Check network and host enumeration model, configurations and pivot, pivoting around. Uh, what is token gonna let me play with? Not enough arguments. Token, oh, it even tried to autocomplete, get UID for me. Sweet. You can run shell code. You can run PowerShell. You can just regular cnb.exe command, run files. Let me get my present working directory. Currently in downloads. Can I move? I can, CD works pretty well. Okay, change directory to the parent directory. Did it know to do that relative? It did. I don't have LS, do I have DIR? Okay, DIR will, will list current directories. And this looks a little messy, but PowerShell-like. I could take a screenshot though, couldn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be kind of cool. Take a screenshot, took a screenshot, successfully took the screenshot. Where did you put it? Does it let me see it? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's in assets. Oh, no, no, it's in the loot. Oh, duh. So if I go view loot, you can see the screenshots and there's my desktop one. Now if I double click on that, does it let me get a better look at it? Whoa, at least you have that here. So in the loot for the agent, like you can check out the console log. Oh, and everything that it does, very slick. So you have whole operations saved here. And then in the screenshots, there's a desktop. Oh, I don't have that. It's the Ristretto, is that what it is in Cali? Yeah, I normally use I have GNOME. Okay, so it was just compressed because it is that size currently. But look at that. Kind of slick and you can interact with it just fine. We might be able to do some other malicious stuff, but look, at its core, this is what it should be. This is the command and control framework and Defender is still snoozing. Totally cool with it. That's awesome. Way to go. I, I can see why it's whining and complaining about the monospace font. I think we got that notification earlier, like when we were looking at it um, in the readme. Even the wiki explained like, hey, it'll look weird formatting wise because of Kali because the font's not going to just be what it should be right away. That's okay. Uh, I do want to call out another sweet individual, the concierge, who was uh, sharing that he did go get a chance to play with this, wrote up a little blog post, and even had a little video showcasing how to exploit on the Windows 11 machine, just as we've done. Uh, they executed the payload using the inline C-sharp method. That's the one that I included in my video, so I appreciate you doing that. Uh, but I do want to take a look at his blog post. Here we go. Here's a Havoc C2 intro and inline C-sharp compilation. Um, this is everything that he explained already everything that we had already gone through for installing and building and that easy good stuff, setting up the client, getting the teamwork, team server framework, and building a payload. Showcases everything that we had just done, building that out. They even end up stealing the shell code to retrieve just the real bytes from it, as you could kind of retrieve for like a PowerShell syntax. And I appreciate them including this call out here. Um, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's using the inline C sharp with add type. So that is this thing that's gonna like touch disk. It's not using a reflection, but it works just fine. Having that shell code lets it just run and do it through PowerShell. Pretty slick. Again, no explo no Windows Defender complaints. And it's working on a fully patched Windows 11 client. Checking out their video, that's awesome. I don't know if they showcase Defender, but they do run Windows Update at the very, very beginning to show, hey, it is still on. Well, I'm glad more folks are taking a look at Havoc uh, and giving some love and support to C5 Spider or Spider. Uh, honestly, this looks super duper cool, and I'm glad uh, there's a little bit more attention to it. So kudos, credit, and fantastic work. I'm excited to see what more we can do with this. I think it might be really cool to try and extend this sort of thing with the uh, custom agents in the Python API. They have some examples here, and you can play with it, and they showcase you know what you might want to work with. So super duper cool. We can dive into the source code, but it looks like it does all the super cool things already and it's willingly giving that out right to you so you can play with it in an open source way. But anyway, still a lot of fun to be able to kick around and play with that Havoc command and control framework. And uh, I don't know, exciting to make that accessible and make it educational for just about everyone that's interested in that. I'm excited to see how it can be extended, but I did want to bring it to you so you can go play with it and explore and have some fun all along the way. With that, 
We'll tie out the video here, but thanks so much for all your support. A special thank you to PlexTrack for sponsoring this video. Please go give them some love in the description link below, and I'll see you in the next video, everybody. Until next time.